to bullet point really quickly through some of the things that I pulled from the interviews or things that really touched my heart. And some of these things might sound kind of obvious, but I think it's really worth considering these things from a deeper level. The first one is men really do have deep feelings and emotions. (laughs) I know that sounds obvious. But I think often as women, we can see men as kind of the rough, tough, unfeeling, or unemotional kinds of beings. And while they may not express their emotions, feelings in the same way or time frame that we as women might, I come to understand and know how deeply they can be hurt and how deeply they feel. And I think there's a lot of social conditioning, and they feel like they have to protect themselves. They're not always in an environment where they feel like they can really express that side. I think often as women, we can see men as kind of the rough, tough, unfeeling or unemotional kinds of beings. And while they may not express their emotions, feelings in the same way or time frame that we as women might, I come to understand and know how deeply they can be hurt and how deeply they feel. And I think there's a lot of social conditioning and they feel like they have to protect themselves. They're not always in an environment where they feel like they can really express that side of themselves. And I just want to, on this topic, before I leave this topic really quick, I just want to quote something that Evan Mark Hatt said in his interview, because I just love this. He said, women need to have some sympathy and empathy for men and men for women. He said, men are not the other. Men are just like you, single, struggling, confused, damaged, ready to give up, wanting to try again, except for one thing. They don't have any support. They don't typically have a coach. For the most part, they don't even really have friends. They have their job, and if they don't have a wife or a woman, what do they have? He said, most men are really, really lonely. He said, nobody talks about this. Men don't talk about this. It doesn't sound good for them to go around saying, I'm lonely. He said, many of them are banging their head against the wall, knowing somewhere inside that they're a really good guy. He says, have a measure of sympathy for them because many guys face more rejection than women will ever face. That just really touched me. I just thought that was really sweet. Mm -hmm. The way to motivate your man or a man is to not complain, criticize, or cuss him out for all the ways he's disappointing you, what he's not doing, what he's doing wrong. And Evan Mark Katz talked about his wife, and he said, she's the only person in my 47 years I've ever met who accepts me as exactly as I am. And he says... Most men don't even know how to tell you that this is what he's looking for. But he said, in talking about his wife, he said, I don't care about a woman being younger, smarter, cuter, whatever. He said, this woman accepts me. I feel accepted, appreciated, admired by her, and she's the first person I've ever felt that way for. And he said, now this might make some women mad because if you're feeling like you're already doing that with a man you're dating or a man you're in a relationship with, and it doesn't seem to be working. Evan Mark Hatt said, the key is not to change your behavior and treat him poorly back. The key is to say, well, this is the wrong guy and move on. And he emphasized that two wrongs don't make a right and that we want to be up-leveling our behavior and we want to be in a relationship where we can offer that kind of acceptance, appreciation, and admiration to a man and that we're going to get back the gifts that he has to bring, the best that he has to bring in that provider, protector, and that feeling of being loved, cherished, and adored. And you want to be in a relationship where you can be a giver and he can be a giver and also recognize that we're all imperfect people. John Gray also talked about how important it is to give him some positive feedback. And he talked about these three magic phrases in case you didn't write these down. He said, these are really simple, but they'll make a man feel really good. And the first one was simply, that's a good idea. Like, listen to him, hear what he has to say, and let him have a good idea once in a while and let him know you think it's a good idea. Along the same lines, that makes sense. And then another one, he said, wow, you're right. It's just a way of affirming them and letting them feel like they're competent in what they're expressing. Another thing that I have found, this is not something that John Gray mentioned, but this is something I've found that works really well. If a man does something and it doesn't quite go right, let's say he takes you out on a date and everything doesn't go perfectly smoothly. Maybe they're the reservation, they can't find your reservation at the restaurant or whatever. 
this simple phrase can just take away so much stress from a man when you just say, it's not your fault. Like, give him the benefit of the doubt and just let him off the hook when something small that was not going to kill anyone (laughs) goes wrong. Give him a break (laughs) because he's trying, and that phrase can literally just transform a man's capability to continue on to try to please you when he knows he falls short to just give him a little break and say it's not your fault. Just let it go when you can. Men need to be needed. We hear this one a lot too and I think there's a lot of resistance around this because I think when we hear needed, we think I don't want to be needy, right? Mm -hmm. And a man doesn't want you to be needy. He doesn't want you to be a whiner. He doesn't want you to be helpless. We're not talking about damsel in distress here. But a masculine man and a man that typically wants to be in a relationship with a woman in a romantic way does typically want to feel like he has something significant to contribute to you and your life. This one, I think, is something that I think we don't always understand either. And it's, I think a man wants to know a woman's standards. Now, I'm not just talking about standards for how or when you might want to be involved with him from a, in a physical or sexual way. But I think he wants to know what your wants, needs, and preferences are. And I think a man appreciates and is attracted to a woman who knows herself well enough to know what they are and how to request what she wants and needs from him. Of course, the key here is how you ask for what you want and need. And that could be a whole discussion. But I will give you just a couple of little tips here that I think might be helpful. And the cool thing about this is that This means you don't have to morph yourself into being someone or trying to act in a certain way to try to impress him or try to be who you think he wants you to be. This is about you letting him know who you really are and what your real wants and needs, hopes and dreams, desires are so that he can have that opportunity to step up into that space to please you if he feels so inclined. I think, like I was saying, the key here is knowing how to invite this kind of response from a man. And I think there's a couple of little magic phrases. They're very simple, but they can work really effectively when you make requests of men and you invite them to either do something differently or to do something that you might really prefer. And these are the magic phrases. They're really simple. You can just say, I'd be more comfortable if, for example, let's say he wants you to meet him in the parking lot of the restaurant, you can say, I'd be more comfortable if we met inside. It's a simple thing. You're not making him wrong. You're just letting him know your preference. Or a variation of it is, I'm not comfortable with meeting outside in the parking lot, and I'd really prefer and would feel better about meeting inside. This is just a simple example, but you can use this in a variety of different ways. And this way, you're not making him wrong, but you're letting him know your preferences your needs, and you're kind of setting a standard for how you want to be treated. Good old Dr. Phil said, we teach other people how to treat us. And in a lot of ways, we really do. (laughs) And then, Wendy, I know you talked about this one too, and I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit about this. And you talked about how men come into commitment. And I just phrased it a little different way, and I said, most men fall in love by doing. Men fall in love differently than women do. And in one of the earlier interview I did with John Gray, but he just said a couple of really key things that I'll mention really quickly here. He said, women should not get lost in trying to earn a man's love. He should do things to win her over, and she should allow him the opportunity to win her over. And he said, when you give a man more, he tends to give less to you. And this is especially in the early stages of a relationship, because at some point you want to be able to give fully and wholeheartedly. But you don't want to overgive too much too fast too soon. Then he says, make sure you're not giving more than a man is giving you. When a man gives to you, it makes him feel more bonded. What this means to me, ladies, and I love this, is you get to lean back, relax, and what I like to call graciously receive. That means appreciate what he has to offer if he's a man that you're interested in. And then he gets to feel rewarded if he succeeds in pleasing you. And this allows him to feel his emotions. It gets out of his head. He gets to feel his emotions. He can feel like he's winning. And he can feel like the gifts that he brings to the table, what he has to offer, might be valued and appreciated. 
and then this increases his attraction to you and it sets you up for a win-win because you're getting more of what you really want, but he gets to feel that opportunity to please you and it makes him feel really, really good. I went through that really, really fast, but those are just a few things. Do you have anything you want to add really quick, Wendy, before we move forward? Yes, my experience and all of my interviews concur with everything you said. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you're backing me up. I'm glad yeah, we're on the I same wavelength here. 